This is an advertisement from Better Help Therapy Online. It's Charlene and Ellie here from the Home I Drink podcast and sometimes we tend to compare our lives to others. I know social media definitely does that for me. You can find yourself wishing that your life looked like someone else's. You also hear the phrase, comparison is the thief of joy and it's so true. It might look like someone has it all together on Instagram, but in reality, they probably don't. Therapy can help you focus on what you want instead of what others have. So you can start living your best life. I think that's what I love about therapy. You can just go to therapy for everything. Everything and anything. Any problem you have, no matter how big or small, yeah. it's, it's going to help. If you're thinking of starting therapy, definitely give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a registered therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. With over a thousand therapists in the UK already, BetterHelp can provide access to mental health professionals with a wide variety of expertise in mental health. Our listeners can get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash HMD. That's betterhelp.com slash HMD. Go loud. Like literally be meeting your husband and wife know. on the other side of yeah. that door. There's a big question on everyone's mind about Love is Blind. Is the marriage real? We didn't speak for five weeks and the next time I heard from him was when he rang me to ask me where to send my stuff. You see this conversation, but what you're actually seeing is two different conversations at two different times with two different people. Welcome to All My Drink with Charlene and Ellie. Our podcast is like a group chat between your best friends, the girls brought on a night out where you spill all the gossip on relationships dilemmas and life <laughs> if you're a return listener welcome back and if you're a new listener welcome i feel like today we will have a lot of new listeners yeah seeing as our guest is amazing you'll see oh in a second. real um how much drink is out for you every wednesday at 12 p.m but we also have the bonus episodes every monday at 12 so you can listen to more of those now on the go loud app or wherever you get your podcast you can also watch the podcast if you're not a listening kind of person mm -hmm. our podcast episodes are out on thursday on youtube at 12 yes so podcast wednesday 12 video thursday at 12 Perfect. so on this week's episode of home i drink we spoke to love is blind uk contestant sabrina victoria if you're not familiar with love is blind by the way i feel like we didn't explain what it if is someone hasn't seen it mm -hmm. um basically 15 girls and 15 boys go in to a pod setting Mm -hmm. When I say pod, I mean like a little room. Yep. And they date each other through a wall. So no one knows what each other looks like. They're not allowed to say what they look like at no, all. No, yeah, you can't give any inkling into your appearance or anything. Yeah. It's, it literally is like what it says in the day and you were love is blind. You're dating for the person and who they are. The heart. Yeah. And it's on Netflix now if you want to go so good. watch it. But it's so, it, it's addictive. Oh, yeah. I don't, and I've said so many times on the podcast, I don't watch many shows. I don't get addicted to mm. shows. But this is. Oh, I was waiting, counting down. For the, I know. Because you can't, at the, when they first come out, you couldn't watch them all together. Yeah. They were coming no. out on separate day. Every week it was coming out. And then yeah. when the reunion was coming out at nine o'clock or whatever time it was, I was literally lying on the bed refreshing Netflix yeah. so the new yeah. episode would come out. It is so addictive. It's so interesting. So, yeah, we're really excited for this week's episode. Yeah. So this week we have a very special guest. I'm sure lots of you will know her from her recent appearance on Love is Blind UK, Ireland's own Sabrina Vittoria. Welcome Woo! to All My Dream. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having so me. So really, really I'm on. so excited. Yeah. <laughs> so excited. We were only, the three of us were chatting there a few minutes ago and every time we say something we're like, no, no, no we have to keep this for the episode. Keep everything for <laughs> the episode. I feel like it's so many questions because it's such an, everything is so unknown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much about it. Like, yeah. well, Can you tell us a bit about your life before? Love is Blind UK. Yeah, so obviously you guys don't really get an insight into where people yeah. were before the show. It's true, yeah. Which is funny because we, we do obviously talk about that a lot throughout it, yeah. you know, it, whether that's in the lounge or with the guys. But I actually had been in a relationship for 10 years. Wow. So then, you know, right. I was 21 when we met, 22 when we got together, 32 then when I found myself being single again. And it was just a case of we grew up together and we grew apart. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that happens and, you know, it was all very amicable. But then... I found myself thrown into the world of dating again at 32 with dating apps and like everything had changed. Yeah. And um, did you find that hard to? Awful. Did you? <laughs> awful. Like I was like, this is horrific. Like, and I found myself like even being really shallow on, on dating apps because you go on and you're 
looking at the photos and you're being like, okay, like, are they hot? And then you're checking the height. And yeah. like, I'm 5'1". I have no right to be going to say, is he over six foot? Yeah. Like, who am I? <laughs> like, absolutely no right. The things that we all do, isn't it? it? All is. of this. Yeah. So it was that shallow approach. And then I found that there were so many people that were on dating apps that just wanted attention as opposed to dating with intention. Mm. And I was at that part of my life where I, I did want to meet someone and I wanted to settle down. Yeah. So, you know, I... Spent a few years really just working on myself. I'd done a lot of therapy. I went solo traveling to South America and the Galapagos Islands and Hawaii. And I just really felt like I was in that place in my life where I had a successful career. I had my own place. I had my life together. And the only thing that was really missing then was that person to share it with. Yeah. So then I thought, well, why not try an unconventional? Because I'd say dating, like in 10 years, you could forget how to date or how to talk yeah. to people. I'd be like, what, how do I talk yeah. to a man? <laughs> what do I do? Like, yeah. honestly though, but, and it's, and it's so surreal. And, you know, even like the little things of like going on a first, first date again mm -hmm. and understanding, well, what is acceptable to have a conversation around? I and know. Whatnot, and different people want different things. Yeah. And when you are that, like in your, your thirties and you're dating again, a lot of the time, not always with people, but a lot of the time it is with that intention of a serious relationship. Yeah. Mm. But it's, how many dates do you go on before you start having serious conversations? Yeah, I know. And that's where love is blind is great because it takes out all of that. There's, you know, you're, you're going, just jumping straight. Yeah. People want one thing when yeah. they sign up. So did you like sign up yourself? Did you choose to do that or did someone send it? Like how did no, that? No, I applied. Yeah. You applied, yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. What's and the application process like? So it's, it's a quite a long process. So oh, I was going through that for a couple of months. So mm -hmm. you've fill out an application, you can submit a video with it, then it's initial phone call, then another phone call, and then you start with Zoom interviews. So they record wow. all of them and they'll like, you'll maybe do like a 45 minute, an hour Zoom. Then the next one, they'll dive deeper into things. And then the next one, and then the final part of the process is actually going and doing screen tests and meeting the execs in London. Wow. And then I did that and a week later I was offered the mm. offered the show. Do you have to do some kind of medical for like psychiatric assessment? Oh yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah. So you have, yeah. Yeah. So you have to do a psych test. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I had just read this amazing book called The Psychopath Test, which is about like spotting psychopaths in real life. So wow. then I was like asking the guy who was doing my psych test about <laughs> how I could spot. And he's like... <laughs> I was like, oh, did I feel? Because I was like, <laughs> I have not paid attention to what we're meant to be doing. I want you to tell me how I'm going to spot a psychopath. Like, he's great, get it right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we did a psych test and then you have to do like sexual health tests. Mm -hmm. And then I think that was it. I think that was the two big things that you had to do. Yeah. You, you just submit in advance that mm -hmm. they arranged. And like your, your hour Zoom calls, like what would they be? What would you be talking about for an hour? Anything? Or? So they want to really get to understand why you're single, why you're ready to go on the show, are you ready for marriage, what your situation in life is, mm -hmm. why love is blind. Then they want to know like personal stories. So, you know, like I had just lost um, Gigi, my granny, like right before I applied. And I think that was probably, there was probably, that probably influenced why I applied as well, I think, because I'd lost someone who was such a big part yeah. of my life. Mm -hmm. And I probably was trying to fill that gap a little bit in 100%. the sense of this person who had showed me such immense love mm -hmm. in my life. So, you know, I, I spoke about that and they talk about your childhood and I suppose they're trying to figure out as much about you as possible. But they'll yeah. also have lighter conversations of like, what TV shows do you like? What? Because they're obviously trying to see, yeah. is there someone out there for you? Is yeah. there going to be connections that you'll make in yeah. the pods? Because otherwise it defeats the purpose, purpose mm -hmm. um so like literally everything wow and then when, once you obviously were offered it how many months later were you in there like how many suitcases do you pack like yeah what, what do you bring yeah <laughs> who did you, who are you allowed to tell or are you allowed to tell anyone so you're at that stage you're only allowed to tell like immediate like close family, close family yeah. and friends so I had told my mom my sister and then my two best friends Ross and Claire and that was it mm -hmm. and then I had spoken to my work and the oh, problem, yeah. I forgot, you have like, a job. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to tell. <laughs> have to tell. Yeah, so I, I, I was able to speak to them in confidence. And okay. it was really, I had worked there for eight years mm -hmm. and I was director of marketing and communications and I absolutely adored my job. Wow. But it was the busiest time of the year for them. And it was like a no holiday policy oh, and the like company wide. And yeah. the problem is I didn't know if I was going to be gone for three weeks or three months. Because obviously it depends how far you know, get how, in the experiment. Yeah, yeah. So you might meet someone, you might not, and you might go home. You might meet someone and not get followed because they don't follow everyone who, of course. who yeah. Yeah. you know, mm -hmm. who meets someone. So I had to have a conversation with them. We tried to make it work. We couldn't. So I had five weeks to like 
handle my team, do a full handover, create like a brand Bible for all of the companies I was working across, oh like God. pack, get clothes. God. And like I wear, like surely you'll know this, I'm always in black. Yeah. <laughs> like I wear so much black. Yeah. And they were like, you can't wear black on, on camera. You can't. Like it doesn't look good. Like you you have to minimize how much we want you in color in the pod, in the pod stage. So Because wow. obviously. I'd be filming. I, like I always too. find, that's mad because I find when I'm filming myself, if I wear black, I look more tan or something. So, mm. so it's fine it in the on. apartment settings and in Greece and okay. stuff, but in those pods, whatever way the colors and stuff were, they were like neutrals and blacks. So yeah. then I had to go and buy all these new clothes and I was <laughs> like, I, like, I was like, I'm a rainbow and I'm not a rainbow. <laughs> oh <my laughs> um, so I literally had these like five insane weeks off just trying to get finished up. And like I worked to midnight the night before I left to go to fly to London to then go to Sweden. So you had no time to think about it really? No. As in like what you're about to go through? Well, I had applied in March. Okay. So I had like, sorry, just doing quick math there, not my strong point. Yeah. I had like a full five months okay. before I'd even left. So I'd really so thought about it. To get nervous. Yeah. really consider. But I mean to like get, once you're, oh, once you get accepted, to get nervous, like did you have time to even like no. process that you're going on it really like that not way? Not at no. all. And no. then like, I actually kind of was and I think you can probably see this. The first few days in the pod, I was like really run down. Yeah. Like just completely drained. I so. felt really sick. And then you see, I think I'm like, okay, guys, I, when I was watching it first, I was, since with my friends and family, I was like, I swear I get better. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Keep just watching. ignore me in the first few episodes. I don't look great, but we're going to, we're going to improve, yeah. I promise. So are the pods in London? They're in Sweden. Sweden? Yeah. So you filmed it all in Sweden? Wow. So we filmed in Sweden, London and Greece. Wow. So we filmed the pod part in Sweden. And how long were you in the physical pods for? I think it's two weeks. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, and how did you find that experience? Like? Do you know the first day... So you don't, like the lounge is the kind of the, the area where like the girls and, and the guys kind of hang out in mm -hmm. dates. And I'll never forget like all of us. So I had traveled with five girls and then the other 10 had traveled together. So, or sorry, four other girls. So there was, there was five mm -hmm. of us that traveled together. And like we were all really buzzing because we had obviously really got to know each other and spent a yeah. couple of days in London. But then going and everyone being in that lounge that first day, all 15 of us. And Is there 15? 15 girls, realize, wow. 15 guys. Like the atmosphere, like the excitement. And then like when you're yeah. standing outside that door for the first time. I'd oh. say so. And I just remember just being like, <laughs> like taking this big day of breath being like because you could like literally be meeting your husband and wife on the other side of yeah. that door um, oh and then like the first day you date everyone okay wow and are you aware that you're being filmed the whole in, time in the actual pods no no you, you don't see any of the, the cameras. cameras it would be quite like I'd say like Big Brother-esque in the sense okay. that there isn't hidden. a cameraman in no. the room. like And like sometimes she'll be sitting in the lounge and then the cameras will turn. Like you'll see that they're going to like twist. Oh, and like, oh you like, what, like, what have they said yeah. over there? <laughs> I want to go see what the gossip. Oh my God. Um, but once you leave the pods, if you get into that final cast, you have your own crew. Then oh. your own camera crew that is then with you for the rest of your journey. So you get really comfortable with them. Yes. I think that's probably how they, they get you in a way because you're really comfortable to open up about everything. Yeah, just to chat to them. Because yeah. I always think like imagine someone sitting in my day. Like, because you do tell everything, but then yeah. you realize it's going to be on TV as well. And you forget, like you yeah. first go in and you're sitting up and you're, yeah, yeah, and like, there's so much you guys don't see. Like one of our dates, me and Steven, like I'm literally like lying on the ground in the pod painting and we just painted together and like, oh. there's so, cause you just get so comfortable and. Yeah. Do you like re feel that connection even with like, say like not Steven, like other people you dated, like, can you feel people's energy through that wall? I just Oh my gosh, them, energy like, is picture. huge. Yeah. Is yeah. And like sometimes... The, the pods can be quite emotionally draining. It can Sometimes that. the lounge can be emotionally draining because sometimes, so the way it works is every day you date everyone and then gradually as the days go on, you date less people okay. and the dates get longer. So when that happens, you gradually have more time in between dates mm. and like there's nothing to do in that lounge. So yeah, you're just sitting there. With no phone. All right. Oh, that, no, no, you, no. Don't, you don't have a phone until no. after Greece. After Greece, yeah. So there's nothing. There's no entertainment. Like the guys had a pool table when we found that out. Yeah. We were like, excuse oh my me. God. We were sitting oh, no. there trying to like make up games like... and play doing wheelbarrow races around the Jeez. line. Could you, not, could you not even have books? Nothing. Nothing. No music, no mm. books, no nothing. What's the reason behind that? Do you know? Because you're, you're meant to be dating with intention and okay. that's all you're meant to do for that time. Just focus on that. Meant solely focus, focus solely on that. Solely on dating. And like it works, it obviously it does work, but at times it can be a bit emotional warfare. Yeah. Um, so every day in the pause was a little bit different from an energy perspective. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you'd have to go into a date and be like, guys, can we just have fun today? Or yeah. like, I'm I'm happy to go deep or... Yeah, it depends on how you felt that day. Kind of. And you have to communicate that. Otherwise, people were going on dates and... 
they were like, oh, she was a bit sore or he was a bit off. But the reality is it's probably just... It's the pods. Yeah. Yeah. Getting. yeah. Oh my and God. in the, where you'd live, is it like an apartment with the 15 girls? So it's hotel. Hotel. Okay. okay. So we stay in a hotel. And, and then you have they, your own room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, in course. your own room. And then they bring you to the pods every day. Okay. okay. Is your, would your social battery be gone by the end? Like... By the end of every day, I yeah, just couldn't speak like to Yeah, like some of those days were really long days. I'm like, girls have hair and makeup to think about. Guys don't yeah, have to worry about that. Really. It's an easy job. Yeah, so like if you're told <laughs> yeah. you're leaving at 6 a.m., you're, at- you're up at 5 to get your hair and makeup done. And then sometimes you'll be filming to 10 o'clock at night. Oh, they do it for you though. You don't have to no, do it No, you have to do your own hair oh, and makeup. Oh, you do yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you do your own hair and makeup. Okay. Except for... The reveal, they do like you do your own hair and makeup, but then they top it up for you and just make sure okay. you're good. Yeah. And on the wedding day, but every other you do it yourself. Day. Yeah, you need to tell Ellie about the fringe story. The one what pound happened? fringe. So I had a, <laughs> you do? I had a fringe going in. <laughs> yeah, but like it was really bad timing. I had my friend's wedding a couple of weeks before going into the pods, and I was like, right, I'll go and get a wee fringe fringe trim before you know you want to look good for your friend's yeah. wedding. And the girl I normally go to wasn't available. So I just went into this like local salon and was like, <laughs> oh, I just want a little fringe trim. And I'm looking and I had like, it was quite a long fringe and like kind of like Shape shaped kind of, out. Yeah. Like so it like really sat really nice with my yeah. hair. And um, she's cutting it and I was like, what is she doing? And I'm looking at my fringe is getting shorter and shorter. <laughs> and like then it was like literally up here. Like I look like, um, what do you call him out of Futurama? Dr. Soyberg, you know the no. name? Like, is it him? And she charged me a pound. She obviously knew she'd done me dirty. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> she's like, I one pound. Something, she's right? like, I have to charge her something, but I've really done this girl dirty. So she charged me one pound. What did she say? Come here, I'm so sorry. She Just give us a pound. I thought it looked lovely she in the past. No. No, but that that was like three, four weeks later. So that was After, three, four yeah. weeks of growth still. And yeah. it's still really short. The fact she even charged you the pound as well, though. Like, what? It was just insulted. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like sulking the way. Even, yeah, why would you even ask for that? Like, what? I used to have a little micro fringe. <laughs> like, intentional micro, like, literally across. I was like, Lord Farquhar just going around. And I had a bob. Yeah, and that's I a better a analogy than comparison. Do- than what's his name, Dr. Scott? So <laughs> so I used to love that show. No, yeah. that was a good one. It was awful. So then throughout the pods, I was like, this fringe... Because it's so hard. Like if you're filming for 12 to 16 hours a day and that fringe and, wow. and my hair is quite thin in the sense that once you style it, like it doesn't necessarily stay. Yeah. So I've like start with a full fringe and by the last episode of no fringe, I was like, <laughs> get this gone. fringe gone. Oh my God, I can't believe that. <laughs> is, yes. is there anything like big that you, you know yourself or from someone else that wasn't aired? Like, obviously there's connection. so much content. Oh, yes. so that's, you don't see that. You know, you, you think that, Stephen and me was your own, yeah. engaged really quickly. Uh-huh. We were actually the second last couple to get engaged. No way. Yeah. Oh my um, God, I thought you were the first. The magic of see? The magic <laughs> of editing. Yeah, wow. Um, so yeah, so there's so much that you, you don't see. And I think, do you know what would have been really lovely? For you guys to see more of the dynamic in the lounges. Really? The friendships yes. that were formed between the girls and also the guys. Aww. Like like I have friends I'm going to have for life. Yeah. Um, which is longer than my husband. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like those girls I'm, I'm going to have forever. So like you just don't get to see how much fun and, and the love and, and how much yeah. everyone respected each other and cared for each other. Yeah. Um, so it would have been nice for you guys to see more of the pod squad as they call yeah. it. It's them. mad like what you can hide on telly, isn't it? Yeah. And the fact you didn't have your phones or anything, I know you're like, did you have a sense of time in there? I know we mentioned it at Love Island and Love stuff. Island, yeah. You've no sense of time. Yeah. Do you have sense of time in there now? So like, could you be in a date for like hours? like or No, so the dates are all set times. Okay. okay. And someone listens in to every date. Right. So that you just make sure that you don't, so it's really strict. You do not talk about anything physical. Because that's not what it's okay. about. It is love yeah. is blind. You're dating blind. You're there yeah. to make a soul and um, a heart connection. Mm-hmm. So it's, you have your set time and then they tell you, okay, like they'll give you a five minute warning and then mm-hmm. a three minute warning, then a one minute warning. Mm-hmm. Have you ever said anything and they're like, ah, Serena, stop it. Or like, what would they call you so, out on if you mentioned? There was one date that I had with another person and we both realized we were big into Formula One. So we like sat talking about like Formula One and talking <laughs> for the whole day. <laughs> and then at the end of it, the person was just like, that was the most boring 46 <laughs> minutes of my life. <laughs> so we had just spoken about Formula One then. They're like, this is not the point either, guys. Oh, God. <laughs> I had to find a soulmate. <laughs> oh. We're like, so what do you think of the Red Bull dominance this season? <laughs> I saw you were just there. Actually, was it right? Oh my right. gosh, it was incredible. I didn't realize how often there's Formula One throughout the year. Yeah. I thought it was only like one big thing yeah. a year, no? no oh gosh, I love no, the no, Netflix no. show. I was hook to that I think I started and it wouldn't really get into it. good highly recommend yeah. yeah addicted it's just so 
the atmosphere, like everything that like the fan zones, like everything yeah. that just comes with it. It's just incredible. It's good vibes. Like, I love it. I'm addicted. Wow. And then we need to talk about Stephen, of course, who was your connection. Well, you had two connections. And can you say who the other connection was? Um, I can, but I think out of respect for them, I okay. don't oh, feel the need yeah, to. Yeah. Do you know, I, mm-hmm. it's, it hasn't been shown. I don't feel the need to. For the reason. Yeah. yeah. What drew you in a sheet of Stephen? Who was... So it's really yeah. funny because on our first day, I couldn't understand him. Could you not? No, because that first day <laughs> where you did everyone, it's so, so <laughs> quick. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they're like, I think it's like seven or eight minutes. So it's like real, like literally quick speed fire. Yeah. 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 to know everyone. And obviously everyone's super hyped and excited. I literally could not understand a word he was saying. Like, <laughs> Where's he from? Birmingham. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I just couldn't they understand are hard him. To understand. Yeah. So yeah. like, I was just like, nah, not interested. <laughs> and then the next day I like had him again on a date and we just really clicked. And from day two onwards, we clicked about different mindsets and, you know, our outlook on life. And mm-hmm. it was just so much that we we really shared our... Interesting. Yeah, interesting yeah. and our opinion on and our values. And then there was a couple of really big moments within the the pods that you, you don't really see that kind of were like I really respected Stephen for how he approached them so like the kids conversation so yeah. obviously this was a big one yeah and there's been so much noise and so much chatter online about that was never going to work because he wanted kids and she didn't want kids yeah. and and like you see this conversation but what you're actually seeing is two different conversations at two different times with two different people That's and they're mental. so are they meshed together like a puzzle like so it's it show it looks like it's it, it it shows you that it's two different conversations at two different times. Okay. But they don't and it's left to your discretion. So obviously everyone assumes uh, that it's just yeah, yeah. Yeah. About it's me and just Stephen. Just Stephen, and yeah. It, hey. So it's yeah. just so they're never actually making it out that it's just done in a way that But it looks are like yeah. 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 Wow. So what really actually happened was that me and Stephen had a conversation about kids, probably in like day three. Like mm-hmm. two, I think first two dates were kind of getting to know each other. So it's probably date three or four. And he had spoken about the importance of him wanting to have kids. And I said, look, the reality is I was 35 at the time. I was like, I'm 35. For me, it's really important that if I meet someone that I have a couple of years with my my yeah. husband. I want to travel the world together. I want to go on adventures. Like I want to spend time just us before we bring another any, life, another life yeah. into that. I was yeah. like, I want to have a really strong foundation and yeah. I want to have all of this adventure and joy with my person. Mm-hmm. It's like, so the reality is I might not be able to have kids when that time comes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, but the other side is I'm not that pushed on like being pregnant. Like yeah. I would be very happy to have a surrogacy or adoption. Yeah. Like I'm very, so I'm not saying I don't want kids. I'm very open to kids. Yeah. And how that looks just might be a little bit different than how you Different avenues. Yeah. 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 And you have to be realistic. Unfortunately, a woman in, you know, at that, it by gets that stage in the late thirties, like yeah. you don't know what is going to be possible. So Stephen had said, okay, look, I obviously need to think about this because it's, mm-hmm not your average answer. It's not really what I was expecting. So then um, we dated, continued to date. And like maybe four or five days later, he was like, okay, I know that we need to talk about, you know, the elephant in the room. And he said, I've really thought about this and I'm good. He says, I realize that you're not telling me that I can't have anything. You just want time first. Yeah. And he does not tell me I can't have what I want in life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just a different avenue. And Mm -hmm. and that's okay. I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm totally okay with that. Mm -hmm. And I really respected the fact that he went and took the time to ruminate and think about it and and what this would mean for him, what would it mean for me and what it would mean for us as a couple. And I really, really, really respected that. Yeah. And for me, that was just like, okay, Mm -hmm. because some people didn't react the same way. And for some people, Mm. it was just a... Point blank, no. Yeah, that was a no. Yeah, yeah. Um, And then the other thing that I really loved his reaction to was the fact that I'd quit my job to do the show. And he's like, I've done the same. Love that. Like, so there was so much that we aligned on and and really connected with Mm -hmm. that you guys didn't see see the bigger picture. Yeah, yeah. It's so nice in a sense that like on the third day you could talk about kids because in like the real world, whatever, like normal dating, you'd be like, ah, here. Yeah, but it's nice, but it just gets to the point it cuts out all the bullshit of like what Literally. people want are they just here for this and that like it's nice that you can actually just have their conversations really mm. openly like and that's definitely yeah. something I do on the first date really oh, you drink yeah oh <laughs> Charlie and Natalia I'm very bad like very bad no but not so maybe not kids like why would you tell no. somebody I love them after like two oh, days stop <laughs> oh I'm a nightmare <laughs> No, Ellie's out here love bombing on the oh, first day. <laughs> literally, serial love bomber. Like, what am I like? Her? Not anymore, thank God. No, but like, no. Jesus. 
But that's good the way that it does that it kind is of nice, yeah. And that's what I said. Like shit. now I wouldn't have a clue. Yeah. You know, yeah. after going from like relationship for ten years, working on myself to this, I have no idea how I, when the time comes I'm ever going to navigate dating again. Yeah, it's I just think it will. crazy world. So yeah, literally. <laughs> no man, no stress. No, <laughs> so much less stress than like. Mm. When did you know you were ready to settle down with Stephen? And like, was there a switch in your head? Was it like a gradual feeling? Like what made you want to get married? So we were, we, we were dating other people the whole yeah. way through. And then I think you are just naturally drawn. To, like if when your connection's that strong, you are just naturally drawn yeah. to that person. So there was one day in the pods, we were playing games just with each other and just having like a really lighthearted date. Mm-hmm. And then we played Hangman as the last game. And it's, he, had, he went and I was like writing a thing and he had made it so it said, you're the one. <gasps> I know all these things. Oh, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he was Cute. like, I don't want to do this journey with anyone else. I just want it to be me and you. I just want to focus on our connection. Wow. So then we decided that that was it. Just us two, we were locking in. Yeah. And then the next day on our date, he gave me his grandfather's ring to mine because yeah. I had my granny's ring on yeah. and he was wearing his grandfather's mm-hmm. ring. So he gave me his grandfather's ring to wear wow. until we saw each other at the reveal. Wow. And within it was a piece of paper and it was like, you stole my heart and then my mind too. And it was actually the start of his proposal. So he had put that in and then oh. that led on. And then that led on to that. Proposal. And did you think you'd find love when you went in or were you kind of skeptical or like, did you expect to find someone? Obviously, I was hoping that I would find yeah. someone. Like that's ultimately what I what you want. wanted mm-hmm. and what I was really longing for was that life mm-hmm. partner. But obviously you're skeptical, especially because I think when you watch the American one, I feel like they're a lot more open Emotion wise, mm. straight away off like, the bat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I was yeah. worried that I was like, like this is behind a wall. Yes. But honestly, guys, that wall, yeah, <laughs> you really get in. sucked in. Can you really not see anything <laughs> behind nothing. it? Like, there's not shadows, <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Because oh, I did when I, I loved the American one as well, but when I watched the UK, I was like, I wonder, is it going to be the same? But it is. Yeah. It's the same amount of like drama, feelings, emotions. Like, I did think that UK and Ireland would be more like a bit different. Yeah. But yeah. I think. I feel like when you're in that, it's kind of like us on the podcast studio. Like we're so comfy on this couch that you end up saying everything. Yeah. And then after it's like, what did we, did we over like, there? Oh, that but because you're in like a little home surrounding. Mm-hmm. Is that what makes you just be like, oh, and, and again, remember guys, you're dating with intention. intention. You're not doing anything else for those couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah. Like there's not even batteries in the remote for your TV in your hotel. Like you are dating without distractions. <laughs> And that is all you're doing. You have no outside Whoa. noise. You have no distraction. Your morning to night is you dating. Oh my God. Do you just come back to your hotel and just like, I'm just you staring at the four walls. I actually did a lot of meditation and um, yeah, to, yeah, I had to at night. Yeah. Like I would just have to do a lot of like meditation and like some recce to like yeah. kind of like take away any kind of yeah. energy. I know people are probably like, what? But I'm like no, being yeah. into energy and energy transfer. So I would have to do that at the night just so that I would have a good night's sleep and just so that I would felt like yeah, I could start fair. the next day fresh. Mm. Where do you eat? Is it in the hotel every day? No. So they bring, it's quite funny actually. So they bring food into the lounge, ah. but obviously they don't want anyone spilling anything. Okay. So you have to wear ponchos. So everyone's, oh. <laughs> so everyone's sitting in their like really nice like, clothes with the poncho I on. wish they'd show things like that. Like that's <laughs> like Disneyland. Funny. Just all going around with ponchos or something. Yeah. Yeah. Lashing the rain. What? That so you won't so spill funny. anything? That's Just so smart. you don't get your clothes dirty or spill anything on Come here, kind of smart. That, Very yeah. smart. I love it. Very like, smart. I would still manage somehow to get, to get it underneath it. You probably would. Everywhere. There's a big question on everyone's mind about love blind is the marriage real it is yeah it's the legal fully marriage, legal yeah yeah. yeah yeah so it's all legit legit married full-on wife whoa yeah so how quickly after the proposal is the wedding like how long do you have to um is it four weeks no it's a little bit longer than four longer. five weeks maybe okay. sorry actually i need to go back to the real first did you have an image in your head of what Stephen would look like <laughs> well sure i said i thought he was bald you thought he was bald yeah yeah, yeah. do you know why about height and stuff like to do height nothing the you only thing know. i visualized yeah. was that he was bald, bald. Okay. Yeah. and i think it's because he sounded a bit like a geezer so i <laughs> yeah, was like is yeah. it gonna be like a cross between like phil mitchell and jason Statham? like <laughs> like tattoos or something like, like yeah like just imagine him being this like bald. yeah and then when I said it in the lounge, all the girls were like, because obviously Same. everyone hated him. Yeah, 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 everyone yeah. was like, oh yeah, he's definitely, definitely. bald. So and what about so. the other boys? Like obviously you dated everyone. Is there anyone that really shocked it looks completely different to Well, Nic- what Nicole to- told us all that Benaya had dreads. So everyone oh, was like, you know, with dreads. So you knew. And, but it's so, I don't even know how to explain it. You cannot picture a person. Like you can, you Mad. will go through a thousand different ideas yeah. in your head, but yeah. you will not settle on one. One. 
Because how can you? Like, yeah. you know nothing yeah. about this person's physical appearance. Yeah. Nothing. I feel like it's like when you see somebody who works on the radio. You always say that. Yeah. And you're like, oh my God, you look You so really know their voice. Yeah. But it's like when you actually do eventually see them, you're like, what? Yeah. Like, you, it's hard to even comprehend that the two of them, yeah, you put the two and, of them and together. And that's hard, actually. You, Is you're it? really hitting the nail on the head there because you, there's almost this disconnection between the, the, the voice, voice you've been talking to in the yes. pods and then seeing the person. Yeah, do you ever look at them talk? You, you, have like, to, you have to put them together. Like, yeah. It takes a minute to yeah. like, get that combination together. Like, it's weird. And how was that behind the screen when you're about to do the reveal? Oh my God. I was, was it nervous? I would be nervous. Sweating. I think I'd that's probably dying. the most nervous part of the whole Is because it? there's so many things running through your head yeah so like you're about to meet the physical manifestation of this person who you've fallen in love with yeah. their heart their mind their soul mm -hmm. and like the excitement that you have to meet that person yeah but then it's like the what oh, ifs like are they going to find me attractive yeah yeah am i going to be their type yeah are they going to like me Am I going to like them? Am yeah. I going to, what if I don't find them attractive, but I yeah. love this person? Like, what does that mean? There is so much. My brain will be right. Like, yeah. you, you have, like, like you just said, you have fallen in love with what you're meant to fall in love yeah, with. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? The, their heart. Yeah, you, you, you fall yeah. in love with what really matters with somebody. But it's at the end of the day, you need, piece of the puzzle. you need, yeah, to, you need to fancy least, the pants off you yeah, do. Like, so yeah. was there ever like a doubt in your mind? Like, and this, that, it's shallow of me to even ask that though. Like, if you didn't find Stephen attractive, like, could that change anything? I think absolutely. absolutely. And it did happen with some of the other reveals. Did it, yeah. People weren't just attracted to each other, but obviously you don't see that. But mm. for me, it was the final piece of the puzzle. Yeah. And yes, I fell in love blind, but that final piece of the puzzle is important. Yeah. And you need to have a physical attraction to yeah. your partner. Yeah. Yes, you do. Yeah. Yeah, it is, happen, it is yeah. such a big part. Like, yeah, but so, it's, I, I must have smelled like Hotel Fraser in there because I just kept spraying perfume. I was so nervous, I didn't know what to do. But uh, it could have been worse because Maria just kept putting lip gloss on. <laughs> so oh, then so, the red lipstick, the red I, lipstick. Uh -huh. I was dead, and she was wearing a lip stain. But then because she was so nervous, she just kept, kept putting, putting it on. She just had a lip red gloss lip handy, gloss. and she just kept putting the lip gloss on. I've seen people make like TikToks. <laughs> yeah, so Did funny. you see the one? And every time the girl, they come back to the camera. Your one just has more and more and more. It ends up being like yeah, all, over all over her face. I'd say when the two of them watched that back, they were like, oh my God. But it's hilarious. Oh, it's so yeah. funny. So yeah. funny. So, so funny. funny. But like, how did no one stop and be like, Tom? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, well, the producers not stepped in at that I'd say they were like, like this is great TV. I know. You think Maria would have been like, we just went. but she said, I, I asked her about it. And she's like, because she's like, you get it. You're so oblivious to everything you know you're so caught in the moment you probably nearly forget even, it looking back yeah yeah it doesn't even yeah. matter not, it stage. doesn't matter yeah. no like you've just seen this person you've been spending hours upon hours, hours upon with yeah. every day wow um but yeah the the reveals are crazy how long do they go on for like 15 minutes that's it that's all you get wow wow okay so after the reveal you fly to greece mm -hmm. and you spend time with all the other couples yes what is that like then being in your sharing a hotel room with them, going from between behind a wall to together the whole time? Like, what is that like? There's something obviously really beautiful about it. Of course. You're with each other in yeah. person. But it's very different from the pods in the sense that you have this camera crew that is now with you. Mm -hmm. And I find that really, you don't really see much of our first kind of night day on the show and I think it's probably because I was so uncomfortable really? I was just like because you could see the, you see it just really feels visible. It's, it's yeah. in the pods it's so natural because you yeah. don't see cameras yeah. but then suddenly it's like this it's doesn't feel natural and it. I do, like feel really uncomfortable and you know yeah. So, but once you get to know your crew and they understand your boundaries and what you're happy to do mm -hmm. and like not happy to do or whatever it just makes it so easy and you end up having a laugh with them and I absolutely adored our crew. Aww. Like, absolutely loved I've them. Seeing your still friends with them. Yeah, now, like, so they're so amazing. Funny. Like, un incredible people and that makes it so much easier then. Mm -hmm. But it was very, very difficult. I think that hardest part was constantly having the camera on you. Yeah. Is it 24-7? Like, no. When, no. You get, so you might have a day of filming. Okay. Um, And then it could, like, say from 10 o'clock to 10 p.m. or it could, might only be a half day. So you might only actually be like, we're going to come and do some shots in your fill it in the morning then you've got an afternoon break and then we're shooting again in the afternoon okay. or it could be nine to six so there, there's a lot more downtime yeah, um, yeah. once you kind of get into Greece in the apartments oh, it must have felt like a honeymoon nearly being well, in Greece was, yeah it was yeah. someone that stunning. You're, yeah. yeah like stunning you've got your yeah. own private pool like room service yeah oh. but it's funny because we get to see the other couples but you yeah, get to see them that? on camera so it's yeah. like you're everyone was like because yeah. obviously we haven't seen the other guys yeah. and they had like Stephen hadn't seen what the other girls look like yeah so it's the first time you're getting to see was was yeah. the vibes of that kind of mad because obviously everybody had dated everybody everyone, at one stage yeah. so I'd say everybody was nosy to see what everyone looked like oh it was could so you feel people kind of like 
just having a little glance around and kind of because what they do is like they they'll start with one couple in there and then another yeah, couple will get in and then in. another so it gives you really time to process it and meet everyone and everyone yeah. gets the opportunity to chat but it honestly that first day when we all got to meet it was like absolute vibes there was just oh, such a buzz there was just so much fun and then obviously Nicole and Ben came in and that was just yeah. like everyone was just like ecstatic like yeah. it was that first couple's couple's one on the beach was amazing. It was so exciting. And how long are you in Greece for that time? Six days. Six days. I think it is. Okay. Yeah. And then you go and integrate each other to each other's lives. Yeah. What was that like? And like meeting the families as well. Like, is that really nerve wracking? Did they actually, when you went in, were people supportive of you going in? Did they agree with it? So I think at first they initially have a lot of questions. Yeah. Um, but then when you actually sit down and explain mm-hmm. to them, like I think my family were very, very supportive. They were mm-hmm. like, we get it. Like, yeah. yeah you know, we just want you to be happy. And like, exactly. you know, my sister's like a partner and four kids. And mm-hmm. like, she was like, I like, I want you to like, she wants that for you. Like, wants that yeah. for me. Yeah. And yeah. Wants, you know, just wants that. My friend, my friend, like best friends married with kids. And like, they were just like, we just want you to find your person and, and mm-hmm. be happy. And I obviously had dated in between my long-term relationship and going on the, the show. Mm-hmm. But when I say I had the worst luck of men, like, did you? oh my gosh, like. The worst frogs ever, like. Like, <laughs> honestly, like, so they were really supportive. But yeah. So what happens is we move into an apartment together mm-hmm. in London. So you're suddenly, like, obviously. In Camden, is it? Yeah. Apartment looks bloody lovely. When yeah. I saw it on the show, I was like, Jesus. You're like, can I keep that? Bed? We had a three bed, three bathroom apartment with a patio that went around it but then a full these stairs that led up into a full roof terrace the whole wow yeah so actually in the hen we ended up having like the hen started at mine and we all did our makeup Deadly. together and had drinks oh. and it, the apartment was but it was great because obviously it's hard moving in together but me and Stephen had our own bedroom to get ready in yeah. our own bathroom and then you said space like you're right yeah. on top of each other kind of thing yeah yeah it helped yeah. but this is when you get your phones back okay and I was really anxious about that because I yeah. know I can be quite bad on my phone. Okay. But then I realized a lot of it's to do with work as well. So you, yeah. once you take that out of it. It's actually way less. Yeah. You're mm. ringing everyone and you're feeding mm-hmm. them in and you're like, like my mom and my sister. Yeah. Because obviously they're wondering, is she still in it? Of course. Not. Mom, Nobody yeah. knows. They have obviously have got producers numbers and stuff. And yeah. Welfare, if there's anything. If something happens, yeah. They, there's yeah. a way to contact. But they're all sitting at home just not knowing what's. Going and on. did anyone you didn't tell that you were going in, did any of them think that something had happened? Because you just if they were texting and you're just not here. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Obviously, I didn't have my phone for over three weeks. Yeah. So when Long. I went and got my phone back, people had thought I had died. That's people, what I was thinking. I, so, was like, I would think that. Like, people yeah. were contacting my friends to be like, I'm really worried about Sabrina. Like people were Welfare contact, like, check, like It was like wild so I actually put up an Instagram story being like guys I'm not dead like I'm fine like because I had all of the I was like am I this bad on social media that people think I don't post for three weeks you're loved that's here yeah yeah people were like I thought you'd blocked me I had to go and check to make sure that you hadn't I was worried about what I had done I contacted Claire I contacted your mom I can't like people were like where did you really go? concerned like, I was just like guys I've just been really busy with work yeah <laughs> oh my really god busy. <laughs> really <laughs> busy with work yeah. <laughs> just needed to take a little social media yeah. break <laughs> and for anyone who hasn't watched what did your family think of Steve and what did they think when they met him well it's so funny because I didn't because I wanted to really put all of my trust into the experiment of course so I didn't want them making any like assumptions okay. or like judgments about Stephen before they met him so I didn't even tell them his name. Oh, wow. wow. So when they first met Stephen, they were meeting him, the, uh, my fiance, for the first yeah, yeah. time. Wow. From age, name, what he looked like, what he did, everything. My mom, it's quite funny because I think you can see my mom. She was you iconic. Can, she's yeah, a real she mom. Was, yeah, like, yeah, so you yeah, can tell like, yeah. that everything she's saying and it is just coming from a genuine place. Like, of care. She's like, yeah. She's amazing. Yeah. What you don't see. So she like grills Stephen and asks all these difficult questions. And then she's like, and what about you, Sabrina? It's your turn to answer them. And I'm like, and you're like, oh, Sabrina, like, oh, you're meant to be on my side. And she's like, Sabrina, if you're getting married, like, yeah. I need you to answer these questions. No too. So then I got grilled. Oh, <laughs> my like, God. Oh. Um, my friend Claire was just, I think, taken aback by it all. Mm-hmm. And my sister was just not on board. No. She just said that. Like you see it, she says it on camera that mm-hmm. she felt like Stephen was very different as soon as the camera stopped rolling. Because once they fit, we filmed until probably like 10 p.m. that night. Okay. And the camera crew and everything finished and we all stayed in my uh, apartment. Yeah. So she had seen like a glimpse of it. I don't know how she'd seen it because she says he's different when the camera stopped rolling. 
so she must have seen it bits in between when they were maybe moving things yeah. or like doing because we did setups in my bedroom and did setups over here and we left yeah. Stephen and my mom to talk and then mm -hmm. and she was just like I'm not convinced it's all too good to be true and wow. I think it's just for the cameras wow and how did you feel here and that yeah when she told so, that I someone that you're said, so excited to show and like she said it in front of him like it yeah. wasn't yeah, yeah like it was very much an open yeah, yeah. and I got really really defensive Straight often away, yeah. and I was like because we, the beach scenes and stuff that you see mm -hmm. that day, we had done that morning and everything. So it'd been a really long day for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I was just like, it was just tired. We've had a really long day. Like yeah. it's just off now. And she was just like, yeah, I'm not having this. Wow. Do you think family just know sometimes things? They do. Are, they can see things that we can't. Yeah. Like outside, like your family can 100% see things that we're blind. It's like a blind. magic power sometimes. It's, I don't know My sister. Is. Yeah. Like, Smisha, if I ever meet anyone again, you're yeah, going on yeah. the second date. Like, Literally. I'm not going past date two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's your sister's name? Shamisha. That's beautiful. Oh, wow. yeah. Just bring her on all your dates with you. I said date two onwards. Yeah, she, she can them. find you someone now. And like, yeah. it's just this mad intuition. She just knows. Yeah. She's like, Serena, you're far too trusting of people. Mm. She says you take people by their word, not by their yeah. actions. Okay. And yeah. you just let people in too quickly. And, and then you only realize when they screw you over and she says you need to start being a little bit more yeah protective of your hard. heart like yeah you get blinded like when you're in that phase of liking someone like you, every red flag that happens you're like oh, you change God. the color of it yourself yeah I've you really it. do you find an excuse for everything you just squint and it turns yeah green. Lala, yeah. Lala, <laughs> can't see it. yeah the color flying guys yeah. <laughs> seriously like that's literally what we do but did, did that instill any doubt on you when she said those things or were you I mean, still of like, course, because yeah. obviously, like, my mom and my sister are, like, two of the most important people yeah. in my life. And I really respect their opinion. Mm -hmm. And I really value their opinion. Mm -hmm. So it was really difficult. So I actually yeah, did yeah. some therapy and stuff then during the show. Like, mm -hmm. I went and spoke because I was like, oh, I need to work this out and need to kind of figure out where my head's at and stuff. And yeah. try and make sense of it because mm -hmm. it was a lot. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, my sister was then like, I'm going to support you. Yeah, She's no matter like, what. I love you. Yeah. I care about you. I'm going to support you. But throughout they do like these like MIV like master interviews you know the one-on-ones with camera yeah. mm -hmm. and she said she didn't feel comfortable doing those anymore because she wouldn't feel like she was being true to herself to herself yeah. that she would support me and my wow. decision oh my god wow it's mad isn't it it's a good sister though yeah oh, oh, good god, to have someone oh yeah, yeah. yeah. everybody yeah. needs she's been like so protective of me ever Aww. since I was a kid like honestly when I first started going out clubbing and stuff like if a guy looked at me wrong she'd be like why are you looking at my yeah. sister <laughs> like don't look at her you're not watching look at it like she's like <laughs> she was always <laughs> or if I was going to nightclubs I shouldn't have been at like there was times she would turn up at a nightclub <gasps> and pull me out and get me in a taxi home no way but, oh yeah at like, the time you probably hated her and now you're like you know what yeah she makes, just, I get it like she's honestly just the best sister thing Aww, it really is love that. can we talk your wedding day yeah. yes take us through that whole day from the beginning to the end to all of it how was that day crazy was it yeah of course I mean yeah it's your, your wedding, wedding. Like, yeah. literal wedding yeah I was really stressed because obviously you're giving up a lot of control and I'm yeah. not great with giving up a lot of control yeah but like I didn't know, like, I was like, do I get to see my flowers? Like, so I didn't even get to see my flowers before the wedding. Yeah, because they organize everything for you. Yeah. They organize everything. So, everything. So you do have a meeting, obviously, and they're okay. like, this is what we're thinking. And they they came in to us and they showed us this, like, beautiful, gorgeous pink palette and flowers. And I was just like, mm -mm. no. <laughs> Stephen was like, breathe. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want any color. <laughs> like, oh, no. I want eucalyptus and white yeah. and, like, greens. And, like, I'm just not a, like, a pink girl yeah. yeah and so I actually then it's quite f funny everyone who knows me are just like of course you did so I ended up designing up a mood board and like sent it to <laughs> them that. which was like that arch and yeah. the, so it's gorgeous to be fair they bought my entire vision to life oh which was incredible to see when I walked through that door. And that's yeah. probably why they didn't tell me because they wanted it to have this to like yeah. wow yeah. moment. But when I said, I was in tears the day before because oh. I was so stressed. Like all of my friends were arriving. I didn't know what was even happening the next day. <laughs> like, Yeah, that is um, stressful. Really stressful. But then the day itself, it was a really early start, which I cried about as well. I was like, I do, it's my wedding. Why are you making me get up at 5 a.m.? <laughs> oh, it was 5? 5 a.m. Nah. I'm having a late wedding. In fact, that I is that just so they much. can film every as much as they can. So much really, to capture. Yeah. Like, yeah. You have to yeah. capture you arriving at the venue. You have to capture your hair and makeup. Like get yeah. ready. Yeah. Like the shots of the event. Like there's so much that they need to yeah. capture. So I get it, but I'm just not a morning person. I'm not either. So I was like, this is my wedding. Mine was <laughs> they were like, early. come on. <laughs> but once I got over that, do you know it's so weird? Like I had like an, a sense of calm. Mm -hmm. 
on one hand. And on the other hand, I was like, my intuition was like, this has not been enough time. Mm. Like, and I constantly, mm -hmm. and I said that a lot in my interviews throughout the day. I was like, I am certain I love this person. Mm -hmm. I am certain he is my person, but it has not been enough time. We have not experienced each other outside in the real world. Yeah. And I think there was like this added pressure. Like they don't pay for your friends and families to come. I heard that on yeah. TikTok or something. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And my bro brother flew in from Korea. Like my brother heard. lives in South Korea. So like he had flown in for the wedding. Like my fat, like, and most people were based in England. So people were just getting trains up. Yeah. My family all were coming from Dublin and Belfast yeah. and South Korea. So like it was like planes, it was hotels. It was, you know, it was a lot. Mm -hmm. So there was pressure of having all of them there and you don't want to let anyone down. No. So it was real mixed emotions that whole day. And the nerves of walking up the aisle then. Nerves. And you don't know. And seeing all of his friends and family for the first time. Like obviously oh, we've yeah. met some of them. Yeah. Like, but, Close family, yeah. But I'd met, well, a few friends and then there's 20 of them there. Oh my God. Um, so it's very surreal. Yeah. yeah. Very surreal. And on that day, can you see all the cameramen and stuff around? Oh yeah, like the production's massive oh, that day. I'd be huge, kind of oh. huge, huge production that day. Oh and did the other people in the show get to come to each other's weddings? No. 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 That would be nice, wouldn't it? That would it? be lovely. That would make sense. Because yeah. you're all like friends, you're all in the same experience. Yeah, like. it would have been really nice. Yeah. But it's it's so funny because obviously it was such an early start, but it mm. doesn't feel like the day was that long. Like it feels like so much so happened and yes. so quickly. It yeah. really did. Obviously it was really beautiful to have moments with my mum and my sister and Helen and Claire mm -hmm. before like when, going yeah, down yeah. and then my brother walking me down the aisle and there were some really beautiful moments in it. Yeah. And then... Like, I nearly held it together and I got really choked up at the thighs. Yeah. Um, and then it was honestly just one big party after. I was going to say, yeah, before we touch on that, actually, the party, my boyfriend thought that vows were given to you by the priest. We were oh, watching, no. we were watching, I, it might have been your wedding or I don't know what wedding it was and it was one. He'll be waiting there. Yeah. And the, we were wedding day. I'm great. I was saying to him, I was like, oh, I cannot wait to like read out our vows or something, whatever we were talking about. And he was like, I think he said something like, do you have to write them yourself? And I was like, yeah, like they, it, it comes from the heart. Like, he's like, do you not get given them? And I was like, oh my fucking God. who? You might find a template on Google. <laughs> That's or what I said. I said, like, you're going to Google it. <laughs> I'm going to find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll find out whose wedding it came from. God. Oh my God. Do you know what though? I actually found it really easy to write my files. Did you? Mm -hmm. I feel like when you're feeling them feelings, you yeah, would. Yeah. Just like out. I literally wrote down, like I started off with a lot and then I just tried to like narrow it down narrow and like down. make it like obviously make sense. But yeah. It's amazing how much, like, I would never have thought that. I always, you know, when you see, like, really emotional boys and stuff. Yeah, you're like, yeah. I could never. It's amazing how much, like, how easy that comes really? to you. Really? When you feel them feelings. Like, yeah. yeah. That's so nice. And then how soon after the wedding then did you realize that it wasn't for you and it wasn't working out for the two of you? Pretty quickly. Okay. Do you know, and this is the other thing that you guys don't see a lot of throughout mm -hmm. it. There's a lot of conversations about London and Belfast. Yeah. Yes. We saw that in the reunion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. everyone's like... Well, she said she was going to move to London and she didn't move to London. So she let down. And it's like, hang on a minute, guys. First of all, there's so much that's been left out. Again, TV narrative. They yeah. wanted to create this mm -hmm. whole where are they going to live storyline. Yeah. The reality of the situation is you can't just click your fingers and move to one city or another. No. no. I was very happy to move to London. Mm -hmm. However, Stephen shared an apartment with a friend. That is very normal for London. London is so expensive. Mm -hmm. Like, fine. But he was in a flat share. I own my own place. So if I was moving to London, it's getting a case of getting tenants in there for at least six months to a year. Yeah. Very, very minimum. So mm -hmm. once we make that decision, like it's By permanent. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. me and Stephen had a lot of conversations on camera as well. And we had decided that we had made enough big decisions. We were making enough big decisions for like that year, 2023. Yeah. And we were just going to split our time. So we were going to spend a couple of weeks in London, a couple of weeks in Belfast okay. and travel back and forth together. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we weren't going to do long distance. We were going to split our time. Okay. And that's the conversation you see him having with my mum. Okay. Oh. So yeah, where yeah. he says, she, she asks about Belfast. He's like, I have the flexibility. Yeah. I have my business. I have all of that. Like mm -hmm. I am in, like that's no problem for me to do that. Yeah. So we both made this commitment. And then three days after we got married, the day before we were meant to come to Belfast, he told me he wasn't in a position to spend time in Belfast. And when we were meant to come over for a couple of weeks, we ended up only coming. He, well, I stayed longer, but he came for three days. So suddenly we were plummeted into long distance, mm -hmm. which was not the plan. No. And then... That's fine. Things happen. People need to hustle. Go hustle. Support yeah. it. We'll make yeah. it work. So I didn't mind that. I actually i am quite an independent person. He's independent. So it was fine. Okay, not, not ideal when you're just married. Yeah. But like, we'll make it work. Mm -hmm. But then the communication really started to falter. 
Okay. And we had these daily check-ins. So this is something you don't see. And when I was talking earlier about how some days in the pod, you just need to check in to see what the person needs in those moments, whether it's, are we yeah. going to have fun today or are we happy to have serious conversation? Mm -hmm. So me and Stephen had check-ins every single day in the pods. And it was like, what do you need out of, like from me today and what do you need out of our day? Mm -hmm. And then we continued those check-ins in the real in the real world. Oh, I we love that. Always did it off camera, so yeah. we had created this safe space. Yeah. So every morning, with a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, whatever, we would come together and was like, "What do you need?" or "What's bothering you?" Mm -hmm. So suddenly, when someone was annoyed about something, instead of reacting in the moment, we would bring it to our check-ins and be like, "You did this yesterday, and it really annoyed me." And wow, like everyone was like, "If this communication stays like they You're are sorted, yeah, yeah. yeah. set for life, yeah." But then we were doing long distance and Stephen was like, we don't need those check-ins anymore because we're doing long distance. Then he didn't want to talk on the phone unless there was a reason. And he doesn't. He doesn't like texting. He doesn't like talking on the phone unless there's like an actual reason to have a phone call. But we're married, hon. Like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason. Well, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Reason is we're in love. Very big reason. <laughs> so the, just, the, just the communication fell to the wayside. We were doing long distance. I didn't mind doing most of the traveling back and forth. But for me, and this is what I tried to communicate in the reunion that got really edited and has really pissed me off because it made me look really petty when the reality was I spoke about how I didn't mind doing that being the one to travel but when Stephen came to Ireland I made sure he was comfortable and felt welcome in my and house. you bought mm -hmm. bits and I yeah. bought like I spent money on groceries yeah. and I yeah. probably could have communicated that better but I spent no money I think you came across oh, like a boss yeah. I was like slay yeah well people have been like imagine saying that that's really disgusting point now but it wasn't about no, it was not a financially the, motivated yeah. conversation yeah. yeah it was about all of these little things that I did to make sure he felt welcome in my mm -hmm. home yeah it's not to do with how much money the food shop was it it's was the principle it was the fact that, that I did the food shop did it. Yeah. Yeah. and then I explained which is all cut out that when I went to London it wasn't that wasn't Perfect. reciprocated mm -hmm. and like it was a seven hour door to door journey although the flight to London is only an hour it's getting in airports getting to airports getting out people used to give out to you about that when you would say long distance and they'd be like, like it's only England. England I was like yeah. no but it takes up your whole it's day it's hours yeah. 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 yeah like seven hours door to door yeah. Yeah. and the last 15 minutes was a walk from the train station to his flat no don't. not once did he come and help me to meet me with help me with my bags like little things like that, that is don't dead. cost you know things that don't cost money it's yeah. not, it was not a, it was not a financial motivated Just conversation I don't drink tea or coffee I drink peppermint tea no peppermint tea well, it's like not once cents. cooked for me he was he was here twice I cooked for him three times I booked us a holiday to Greece Did like you? yeah I booked us because I was like wanted us to have all of these things to look forward yeah. to yeah and I was like happy to support him happy to but it was the fact that the, I just felt like there was no consideration for me no and then, so that was kind of a real undertone. And I probably tolerated a lot of behavior I wouldn't normally tolerate in a relationship because yeah. we were married. I know. But then there was no check-in. So there was no safe space for me to communicate how I was feeling. You were building up. So I was building up, building up. So suddenly things that were probably not a big deal started becoming a big deal. A big deal. Yeah. And then sometimes I would snap and he'd be like, oh my God, you're, you're whining again or you're on me, you're nagging me. And... He was getting frustrated then with me because he was like, these are small things. And I'm like, but they're not. They're not. They're um, not. Like, oh. And then when it came to Christmas. Yeah. And two days before he was meant to come. So he's meant to come and spend Christmas with my yeah. whole family. And I was very conscious that, you know, he was hustling in London and he was um, a little concerned about, you know, money at that point. So mm -hmm. I had went out of my way to make sure that when he came for Christmas, he would feel really welcome by me and my family. He didn't mm -hmm. like my Christmas tree. I redecorated my Christmas tree for him coming. Fuck, oh, oh, didn't he like it? Was because of course it was black. It was, no, the tree wasn't black. It was a normal tree, but it was all black decoration. So it was like, Ew. but it was like mattes and shiny and cool. glittery. And yeah. stuff. It was all black bubbles. So he was like, we're not goths. And I was like, fine. So I redecorated my tree for him coming. He doesn't even know that. Redecorated <gasps> my tree for him coming. I bought everyone two gifts, one from me, one from me and him so that he wouldn't feel awkward. Oh, Told my whole wow. family to just get me vouchers, me and him vouchers, so that he didn't have to have actually physically get an individual yeah, yeah, gift. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't want him to feel awkward. Do you know, I had taken us to this like Rosewood Macallan whiskey experience mm -hmm. in the Rosewood in London. Oh, wow. And he loved the whiskey. And it was like a 200 pound bottle of whiskey. And again, it's not about the, the money, morning. but it was the fact he loved that whiskey. And he was like, oh, I need to get that. I need to get that. Mm -hmm. I bought him that so he would have it to drink. That wasn't his Christmas presents. I bought him that so he would drink, have that to drink. Over Christmas. Yeah. My like mom and my sister went and got loads of extra food. We're like, what does he like? What does he want? Like it was our first year without Gigi. And we would have mm -hmm. always started Christmas with Gigi, but mom didn't yeah. want... 
Stephen to feel awkward on Christmas Day with us going to the grave. So we had planned that I would go up a few days before before he arrived so I could have my time with Gigi. Wow. And then they would go in the morning without us and th- then we would all go to my sister's together. You changed your whole, whole, whole Christmas. Plan. And this is the yeah. thing, he doesn't even realize any of this, but I did this because... I wanted him, he knows now because I obviously said it after, but I wanted him to feel so welcome. Mm. And my whole family wanted him to feel so welcome. And like, and like I looked back and I've messaged him being like, the Christmas market's going to be on in Belfast. When you get here, we'll have to go and stuff. And like, he didn't even respond to that. And I'm like, was it? Was it all? Was he planning to not? Were you ever going to call me? Um, so it just really hurt me. And I think the fact that it's okay, one thing to disrespect me, but now you're disrespecting my My family. family. Yeah. Yeah. And like the kids and stuff were excited about it because oh. he had came over and and um, the kids weren't allowed to be at the wedding. Yeah. And they're really important to me, my niece course, and nephews. Yeah. So like the first weekend he came here, me, my mom, my sister, her partner and all the kids all went out bowling together and like went out and stuff so he could get to meet them and stuff. They were really excited about him coming for Christmas and it was just a complete disregard. And so that was That's kind of crazy. it. And then so then we didn't really speak until the start of January and it was just back and forth blaming arguing. each other, arguing. It was, I think it was just at that point, it was beyond, it was gone. Yeah. you know, fixable. I mean, if the guy had shown up at my door apologizing and being like, I'm so sorry, hon, let's figure mm. this out. Different, but that never happened. He obviously has his side of the story. I have my side somewhere in the middle. You know, they always say two yeah. sides of every story every and somewhere story, in the yeah. truth. Mm. I have spoken my truth and try to be respectful and as truthful as mm-hmm. I can be. You know, as far as I'm aware, I have not lied about it. I know he accused me of it. I have not lied about anything. Mm-hmm. I didn't say anything. I can't back up. And I think it just got to that point where there was so much tension. All those little things had been building up yeah. and everything just kind of exploded then at that Christmas. And and then we kind of had a, an argument over text mm. and then we didn't speak for five weeks. And the next time I heard from him was when he rang me to ask me where to send my stuff. That was the next time you heard. Wow. But I see all them like things that you say are little, but they actually just aren't there it's the so just matter. small thought we even say like when someone texts in about a boyfriend or something being bad like it can be as something as like a chocolate bar from the shop but it's the thought behind yeah. everything that matters because you're like if you cared about me why would you do the nice things that you know makes me happy mm-hmm. like why would you not want to make the person you're really happy yeah i don't understand that with men sometimes. and like it, it and it really was little things it wasn't yeah. even about money yeah. like it was things like all yeah. these little things yeah. that i'm like and i think and i probably am in the wrong there in the sense that i probably held on to a lot of that because I didn't want to argue with him and I didn't want to like make a big deal out of, it, of mm-hmm. little things. But the problem was all these little things were then at you, e- like, eaten away at me. Yeah, eaten away. Yeah. So then when it came to that point, something that maybe probably could have been fixed or solved in a better way, I was just mm-hmm. like, nah, you have no. no respect. But I think people like that sometimes, even when you tell them, they still won't. Even if you had said one of the little things, probably would have been like what like well anytime mm, I did try it was uh, you're nagging I me mean, so you're not I have enough yeah. going on yeah. I've stressed yeah I'm tr- like trying to get work I'm trying to do this I'm PT and like why, why are you making a big deal out of this um yeah and I genuinely thought I was just asking for the bare minimum in a relationship and, and I'm being so. told I was asking yeah. for too much no we're never asking for too and much so do you think looking back like he is that the type of person he is or do you think he didn't take the experiment seriously going into it and then decided just to be like not given his full energy to be fair to Stephen, I think a lot of it was circumstance. Yeah. And I wonder if when we came out of that, if his circumstances had have been different, yeah. would he have reacted differently? Yeah. You know, was it a case of that, you know, he had quit his job and, mm-hmm. and when he came out, you know, I was very blessed in the sense that I was able to start my own consultancy yeah. and get clients. But I was able to do that because of the position I had set myself in. Yeah. I knew that I'd have no problem getting work. I had great experience. Yeah. So yeah. I knew that I would find a job so I wasn't stressed about that. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, Stephen wasn't as lucky straight out. So I do wonder if circumstances, and that's a hard pill to swallow as it well. Like tough. if things had have been better for him in his life, mm. would we have, you know, would there, our marriage succeeded? You know, would yeah. we have had more chances of success? Mm-hmm. But, you know, ifs and buts aren't going to change anything. No, yeah, you have to just focus on no. what happened and where you are and how to move forward. Now, yeah. Do you think the long distance had a lot to do with it? Or like, would you now be like, I'm never doing long distance again? But like, but you don't mind. The thing, it really, you know, and, you know, we had conversations and he, he did say, you know, we were just naive about the distance and work. And I was like, it works for people though. I, yeah. Not for me. I yeah. made it work. Like yeah. that yeah. The long distance did not bother me. Yeah. yeah. That you did it's, your half. It's, like, yeah. It's the fact mm-hmm. that I felt like I was the only one showing up in the relationship. It needs to be 50. And like I said that yeah. to him. How long after you broke up was the reunion then? So when was eight the next months. time? Eight months. Eight months. Wow. So it was eight months until you saw him again yeah. and no contact. And... So we had had contact because obviously lawyers and dealing with all of that. Shit, and, yeah. You actually yeah. have to have a real divorce. 
Yeah. So I've actually Look, applied for an annulment. So is that when it doesn't count? Yeah. Okay, okay. So now we, you know, no guarantee that we'll get that. But okay. like, I think for both Stephen and I, that would be best case scenario. Yeah. And I think we'd both really hope for that. Yeah. So I um, arranged all of that with my lawyers and stuff and had okay. to work with Stephen through that on the paperwork. So mm -hmm. we communicated when we had to. Mm. Um, and it was all very pleasant. But I think for me, it was the first time seeing him face to face. And I think I had held on to so much. And for me, you know, I'd, I'd spoken to my therapist about it a lot. And I was like, so torn of whether to go in and speak my truth or to just leave it. Um, my therapist is explaining, you will resent yourself if you don't go in you there and speak your truth. Yeah, this is your opportunity for closure. Like you need to go and explain to him all of these things that you held on to and all of these things that why you felt taken for granted, why you felt like he didn't yeah. show up, why you felt like he was a different person when the cameras stopped rolling, mm -hmm. like why he told you this like before you got married and then three days after told you something else. That's a conversation yeah. that should have happened before you got married. It's just like, this is all things that you will regret and you will hold on to forever if you do not go and have your closure. Yeah. And that's what the reason was that. for me. Yeah, yeah. You're, I would have been swinging the eggs. Oh, I would have been. <laughs> I would have gone I think there, you. Like, I think you said everything so well and made your points yeah. really Thank you. clearly. You did. You came across so well in it and like anything yeah. I've seen. And like it's hard like, because that's a yeah. 30 minute conversation and you guys are seeing seven minutes of it. That must be so frustrating. So, though, and I was you don't so know what's unhappy be yeah. with my, because I've all of the producers been like, this is your time for your closure. Go out and say what you need to say. And I go out and say it and that's all cut. You don't see any of that. Do you not? No. So, uh, so I was really upset about it and I'm sure yeah. Steve even really upset about some of it as well. Yeah, of course. Do you know, yeah, of course, I think, yeah. you know, it wouldn't be fair to say, you know, there's definitely things he's probably going to be upset about from that reunion yeah. as well. But again, that's the joys of TV and what you've signed mm -hmm. up for. Mm -hmm. But for me, that was my closure and that, you know, allows me to kind of step forward. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's nice to be able to come on and like talk to you guys and in yeah. a respectful way fill yeah. in the gaps for people because I think 100%. there is so many questions people had. Things but, unshown and everything. Like, mm. And obviously it was filmed a year ago. How is that now a year on? Like watching it back is it really triggering. To see? Yeah, is I'd it? say so. Really triggering. Yeah. So I was actually diagnosed with depression at mm -hmm. the start of the year mm -hmm. when I was dealing with all of this because yeah. you have to remember that yes, a certain amount of people know because once you get to the marriage like, and wedding stage, you can bring more people in and they can all sign yeah. NDAs and like you have twenty people that can come to the the wedding. So you have yeah. twenty people that you can confide in, but you are putting on this front for the world because nobody knows mm -hmm. that you've done this show. No one knows you got married and no one knows you're going through a, a like a breakup mm. and not just a breakup, but like the breakdown of a marriage. Yeah. So it was incredibly difficult to constantly be like, I'm fine. I'm pretending like this is, I'm just like have to disassociate and pretend yeah. that this isn't happening. While on the other hand, having to deal with this anticipatory grief for this relationship that I not just a relationship, this marriage, like this life yeah. that I thought I was going to have mm -hmm. with someone. And I found it incredibly difficult to deal with. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of embarrassment that I had let my friends come to that wedding. Mm. And then it had lasted such a short time. Yeah. So I kind of isolated myself from them as well. I went to LA on my own for a few weeks just to kind of just, I just worked from there, but yeah. just to clear my head and be on a different time zone so I didn't have to deal with talking to anyone and yeah. also just so I could kind of process it. Mm -hmm. But like there was days in LA where I didn't leave the room and I would just literally cry morning to night, order room service, oh. wouldn't even eat it. Like I was just curtains closed in the dark, but it was definitely part of my healing journey. Like I needed to, um, that time, like, to, yeah. to let it out. Like I think yeah. it, like it, I'd been holding on to so much and it was almost like this safe space away from where anyone knew me to just let it out. Yeah. Yeah. But it was really May before I really started feeling like myself again, like my bridesmaid, one of my bridesmaid, Helen. I didn't tell her the full story till June. Did you not? Because I just, like, Ellie, I was so embarrassed. Were yeah. you? Yeah. Just, and like, my friends are like, so you have no reason. Like, and yeah, I was like, you guys no. showed up for me. You were on TV. You didn't ask to be on TV. You yeah. did it for me. And you all paid out of your own pocket to come to this wedding, book flights, accommodation, trains, whatever, mm -hmm. for a marriage that lasted a couple of months. No, but I think friends should be there for you no matter what regard. Like, of course. Your friend, yeah, your friends yeah. had no idea if it was going to last for however many years or like the rest of your life. Or And I think once your friends are there with you through it all, like... Yeah, because you would oh, never feel that way. To, if, if it was one of them, you'd be yeah. like, oh, I'll be there. I know, yeah. but it's hard to give that. It's that so hard. hard. And it, I know. It's really so hard. difficult for me to, I think I still had to come to terms with it before I could really yeah. talk to them about it. But like, they're all, like, they've been, like, I'm so blessed with yeah. what I have in my life. I have so much gratitude for mm. the incredible friends and family that I'm surrounded by because honestly, they've gotten me through mm -hmm. this year. Yeah. And did you feel like nearly two different people when no one knew and you're going through this breakup, but then you're putting on the front for, 
yeah. other people. It's like you're not you're like Hannah Montana vibes. Like, yeah, full on. Like, <laughs> Hannah, <laughs> yeah. Um, like and, would people be asking you about it? Like, well, it's like funny when someone's like. Oh, so at yeah. one point, I I was literally married and yeah. have, like happily married to an yeah. event, but I when someone's asking if you're in a relationship. You're like, oh, I have yeah. a boyfriend. Do you know, or, do you <laughs> yeah. know like, you're, you can't be like, oh, can't say. I'm married. Yeah. Married. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that's really strange. But then it was like things like with clients where they're coming to me and being like, so not, like, fair play to you because we would never have guessed in a million years that, that all of that had been going on. Like, when you've yeah. been working with us this whole year and we would not have yeah. had a clue. And then the harder part is then friends. Mm-hmm. who you because you only have 20 people and like that includes family and everything so people mm-hmm. that you didn't bring into that inner circle being like you got married and didn't invite me to your wedding and this is before they've seen the reunion so they don't know that we're not still together and they're like so where's your husband have you been hiding your husband from oh, me all of and you can't say and I'm just like ah. so that's why between the wedding episodes and the reunion I took yeah. myself away and like mm-hmm. to the to Formula One because I was like first of all the amount of congratulations messages really Really hard, oh, yeah. Really, that. really difficult. Oh. People being like, I like love you're you watching guys. it in the same time frame as everybody else, basically. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, never even thought. But you're the only one knowing the outcome of it. None of us have. And they all the think outcome. that you're still yeah. happy. Oh you my get god. all of these and congratulations messages. I'm so happy. I knew you guys were going to last. Can't wait to hear your story. Oh. Can't wait to see what you've been up to. Oh my god. I mean, while I'm like crying into yeah. <laughs> a chai latte. Oh my god, in <laughs> LA. Oh my um, god. So like that was really that week was probably between the marriage episodes being released mm. and the reunion was probably one of the hardest. So you went to F1 and said, yeah. With a bunch of girls that I'd never met before oh, did and didn't know that. me and just could go and have a lot of fun. Unreal. And what made you go get the diagnosis? Was there a point where you're like, this is actually more than just... My, so I actually didn't it's think depre- I was depressed. Like right, I okay. did and I was like, oh, yeah. I've just got really bad anxiety. Blah, blah, yeah. blah. So it, my anxiety started getting to the point where I wasn't sleeping. Okay. So I started getting really bad insomnia. And I think it was just a case of, you know, I really hyperfixated on work. So that mm-hmm. was fine. That kept me busy during the day. But then when I would go to sleep at night and you're in that silence, your brain, my brain just started overthinking everything, overanalyzing. What if I did this or what if he had done this or what? If, and it's again that if, buts and maybe. Yeah. yeah. So I went to the doctor to be like, I'm not sleeping, blah, blah, blah. Like I've got bad anxiety and stuff. And like we sat and spoken and went through everything and she's like all these questions and blah 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 and, and I have been going to therapy at this point mm-hmm. as well and she's like Swinny, you have you have depression like and I was like I'm not depressed and she's like like yeah that song Taylor Swift I can do it with a broken heart like I'm so, literally like, you. I'm yeah. so depressed yeah. that I act like it's my birthday yeah like everyone would have just thought I was absolutely fine and living my best life when mm-hmm. the reality behind like there was days where I would just close my blinds and like not even step outside because I didn't want to speak to anyone. I didn't want to see anyone. I would just be ordering food and then it would just be takeout boxes just piling up and like I'd be ordering food and then maybe having like a slice of pizza and then not eating it and like Rest had no gone, appetite. Yeah. And then my apartment was going to disarray, like which is so unlike me. Um, and you would have days of like that darkness for like maybe four or five days at a row and then you would get like come out of it and come out the other side and like clean it and then you'd be fine for a while and then it would hit again but it's so funny because even when I was going through all of that I was like I'm not depressed I'm and it took a doctor to say telling you yeah this is depression like depression Mm. isn't what we all imagine it or how you you assume it assume it's going to kind of appear in 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 you individually and then she gave me anxiety meds and Mm -hmm. they really have been really helpful I'm really funny about like medication and like I'm like one of these people that like took Calpol up until they were like 27 because I'm so free <laughs> of like paracetamol yeah. and like I would never take sleeping tablets because I have this fear that I'll never wake up like, I'm exactly, so irrational I'm, I've never I've I'm never taken scared. a sleeping tablet no yeah I'm, never. No, I'm terrified yeah. and like so so for me I'm having insomnia and she's like sleep and I was like I'm not taking sleeping tablets yeah and then she was like, we can put this on this, like this medication every day. I was like, I don't want something I'm going to end up relying on. Mm. So we ended up with propanadol and it was like, I could take up to 80 milligrams off it a day. And then mm. she, she was like, you need to record it, see how you're getting on. Mm. If you're taking it every day, then we need to look at another option. But thankfully that was enough that if I knew I was having like a really bad anxiety or a panic attack or whatever it may be that I could take those and it would really ease okay. the physical Symptom. kind of elements yeah, of, it, of, yeah. of, of anxiety and depression. But, um, yeah, it was crazy. And like, I met, I remember meeting one of my friends in, gosh, it must have been April or May. And she was like, 
Sabrina, I'm so shocked. And she's, I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, talk about Instagram free reality. Mm. She says, you're shaking. You're constantly regulating. She says, you're on. The, like, she says, I've never seen you like this. She said, I would have thought you've been living your best life on Instagram. And she says, like, the person in front of me is a shadow of the Michelle, person yeah. I, yeah. I saw last year. Because I, again, avoided everyone. So I hadn't seen mm -hmm. her in like four or five months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I'm really worried about you. She says, like, this is just... She says, I'm genuinely shocked at of the person what in front it of me. It's mad how much you can put on a front to... And Instagram is just Instagram. It's, it's like... Just yeah. pictures. You can literally show yeah. how you want people to think you feel. Yeah. In that moment. like And and that's the, the added level of NDAs. Yeah. So I can't talk... You know, I Of course, could, you yeah. couldn't. Yeah. You couldn't. Yeah. You really feel like silenced. Like you couldn't... Not silenced, but I do feel like they're probably... Like I did have welfare and support from yeah. the show. Mm -hmm. But I feel like there probably needs to be maybe a continue Because I don't think this is a situation has ever happened before where a married couple has broken up before the reunion. Okay. And there probably needs to be a, a something, contingency. Something in place. Health, like, yeah. Because it's... Yeah, I agree. A lot. Yeah. Yeah, I find yeah. that really hard. Because it would have been nice for you to be able to go back to norm, but you couldn't. You had to pretend like... Yeah, everything was funky dory. Yeah. Do you have any regrets about the pods in general or like going on even? The pods, no. I regret saying yes. Do you? Yes, because mm -hmm. I knew in my... My heart of hearts, I knew it was real mind, heart, like my everything in me was like from an emotional perspective was going, say yes, this is your person. Yeah. The level headed side of me was being like, this has not been enough time. Trust your so, intuition. Yeah. Trust, and I didn't. I did not listen to my intuition. Yeah. And I think my biggest lesson is probably being trust your intuition, ask questions later. And women, we know this better than than men even like yeah. we have that built in go, yeah. but that like it, and they say it's like your second brain like mm -hmm. you have to listen to that if that's telling you something there's a reason for it yeah and I did not listen to, I actually got a tattoo for intuition when wow. I was in Greece so the holiday that I booked for me and Stephen me yeah. and my friend went on oh, oh, lovely. in May and I got like a tattoo on that for like intuition and yeah. my intuition because it's the one thing that I did not do on that yeah at, at the, on the wedding day but that's such a nice learning lesson yeah. though to have would have been nice well, to learn it before I got married. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the timing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the quote. It's like the first best time is to do something is yesterday, but the second best is now or something. Mm. So it's like that. That's the way you can yeah. yeah. Do you ever see yourself going on reality TV again? I can't imagine I would do anything like Love is Blind like that, that would be severe. Like that was like that's... It's just intense. It's, it's, and it's also, it's marriage is like a big deal. Yeah, yeah. I think it's actually one of the only shows that actually is a legal marriage yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't think I would go on anything that's like as vulnerable great mm -hmm. British bake off well I can't be so I'll definitely not be going on okay. that either <laughs> come, but, dine with well, <laughs> come dine with me something, um, something really light <laughs> look I mean right now I know but never yeah. say never um, I suppose it would depend on what the opportunity was and what came away but at the mm. minute I'm very much not in the mindset yeah. for reality TV or yeah. TV in general no. Look, as I say, never say never, but right now it's just not. Yeah. You're happy in Belfast. Yeah. Happy, you know, all my like, clients are in Dublin, so I get to come oh, between you're Belfast all the and Dublin. And, and you're traveling. I'm really, love, love my work. I love my clients and I get to travel now as much as yeah. I want. And I love that. Aww. So that's just, it's actually, it's going to sound so bizarre, but the normality of work has been a godsend the last few it's weeks. Like, yeah. yeah. Something that you know is normal, like normal. what you're used to. Yeah. 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 And how's it having like, loads of followers now and like people so from all over the world <laughs> like, are, <laughs> like like are people messaging all the time who you don't know like how's do you that? know what's been so lovely so like I think it's like 96 or 97 percent of my followers are female Look, oh, oh, yeah so nice. and I have had women from all around the world message me and tell me their stories oh. and like that does not necessarily mean about breakups but like people tell me about their conversations that they've had to have about kids yeah. people telling me conversations about their dad people telling me oh this is what happened to my relationship and why I left or do you know I was stuck in this and you really show me that I, I'm strong enough to walk away really? from this situation yeah. and like just incredible the amount of I have not had one negative message oh, I which know. I think is in, like a saying to think yeah like even when I put up those question boxes and stuff I have not had any neg I, of course on my post I'll get the all comment yeah mm -hmm. but like 99.9% .9 of what I've received has it's been amazing. overwhelming I've seen positive. so many TikToks about you as well and they're all like loving you mm -hmm. all See, the I've, I've like this girl Sabrina I'm like, yeah <laughs> well, when you saw it today and it was like we need Sabrina so we need yeah we need her on yeah. the podcast on a podcast yeah. quick well, yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because I think it's really difficult like was it Maria that I was talking to so me and Maria would be very mm -hmm. close and she was saying about like Twitter and then someone else was saying about Reddit and I was like I haven't read any of that and Maria was like what and I was like 
No. No, I was like, no. I'm not, I was like, I'm not, I'm not, mm. I'm not looking for anything. I'm yeah. not commenting on anything. Like I just like, this was a trauma for me yeah. and I just, need, and it wasn't all, that's awful. It's just describe it as a trauma, but it did, it was a tra- of like course. at the end of it, it was a trauma Breakable. for me. Like, yeah. It was an incredible experience up until, you know, when things, and like, that's the other thing. If things had went well, we could have been like Ben and Nicole and Bobby and Jazzy and been in this like really great, wonderful relationship. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately mm-hmm. that just did not work out for us that way. Yeah. But imagine it had off. Do yeah. you know? So yeah. I don't yeah. regret doing the show. I don't no. regret picking Steven. Like, I think you can see the connection was there. Yeah. Um, for me, it was real. It was genuine. And I went in there with an open heart and open mind mm-hmm. to find my person. And I trusted the process. Yeah. Oh, well, I think you're amazing. And I think you did everything yeah. that you yeah. could have done and yeah. should have done. And I think, and, even yeah. like you said, people messaged you saying they found the strength to walk away. Like, you walking away from that even is yeah. so strong. Mm-hmm. Because it's something you wanted so badly to work. And didn't. And I think that's an example in itself. So many people, people stay in things just to stay in them. Yeah. Say they stay in or they think, like, oh, it's not, but it's not bad enough to leave. But like yeah. when you think about it, it is. No, it someone is. not treating you right in any sense is, is bad. And, bad. And, and that goes for friendships as well. You yeah. know, I've walked away from friendships and yeah. stuff as well. Yeah. You know, I, I really believe. And I think that's probably been a blessing in the sense of that I took those few years to work on myself, that I did therapy, that I traveled. Like I really yeah. know who I am. Yeah. And I know what I expect and how I expect to be treated. And... I went in there and I was, because of who I knew who I was, I was mm-hmm. able to be authentically myself, but I yeah. also know the standards that I expect other people to to kind of treat, yeah. treat me yeah. with. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's maybe a blessing of dating when you're older. You when know you know who you are, yeah. you know what, to, you, what you want. Yeah. You want them to like add to your life, not to be like, a, not a burden, but like, just a burden. <laughs> like, really not no, a burden. Just, but, no, yeah. just, but just to make not it better, stress. not to be like a straight, yeah, yeah, like you want them to have their own life, but also just compliment each other in All a good way. Pluses. And that no was, the, that was yeah. the great thing. And me and Stephen had both said that, you know, we wanted a partner. Yes. But we wanted someone who could add value to each other's ni- yeah. lives, yeah. not oh. become each other's lives. Yeah. No. And that was yeah. so, so important for both of us. Yeah. Because we both were so independent, both did have our own stuff going on. Yeah. And like my worst idea ever is someone who, like I become their entire world. Like that it would just be like an absolute Panic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get off me, Darren. Yeah. Is that Which is why long distance yeah, then. I don't know. Wait, what's that thing? I'm claustrophobic. Oh, what is it? claustrophobic, <laughs> Darren. When <laughs> <laughs> you say claustrophobic, I was like, I'm claustrophobic, Darren. Yeah, that's Gemma. Why did I say get off me, Darren? There's no Darren's on top of me. Like, don't uh, worry. I swear. Are you not yeah, yeah. yeah, no Darren's. Don't worry. No Darren's. <laughs> I'm dead. Oh. And is there any wanting you now to date again or in the future or have you not thought about that yet right now I know no I feel like no man no stress yes um I just want to focus on my business focus on my friends my family traveling just I'm just not there my yeah. I'm just not my I'm just not in the headspace like yeah and I think until everything's kind of finalized with the marriage I think for me that's a because like how do you even the go blockage, yeah. Like, yeah. so don't know if you watch this reality TV show but I got married yeah, like yeah. you know like how, still, do you, how do you like, even have that conversation because yeah. they might have watched the show they might not they have might watched not have, the yeah. show so at what point I bring that up what point I bring up I was married like it's all of these things that I know I have to yeah. navigate yeah. that I have never ever had to consider yeah oh God. well a lot of people wouldn't have to consider that either so like yeah, it is something that what do you think? Much what do you think? Will you mention it straight yeah. away? What do you do? I have no idea. I feel like I would. I do the typical Irish make a joke of it. That's what we do. Mm. That's just how the Irish do with everything. You make a joke of yeah. it. Yeah. But what if then they thought you were joking and you're like, no, actually, you were like, was actually, married. Well, you were like, well, I told them. If they didn't yeah. believe it, that's on them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Push the blame on them then. They didn't believe me. So, yeah. Um, no, but it's hard. And I, I wonder, and like, maybe that's a great question for your listeners. There's a lot of people who are dating second time around who have been divorced. So like, mm. how do you, like, it would be yeah. great to understand how do, how do people who are yeah. divorced navigate When do that? you bring that yeah. up? When do you bring it up? And We had people ask about, actually, when do you bring kids up? Yeah. So someone, was it a dating app or something they'd met? And she's going on a date with them, but she doesn't know whether to say. Beforehand. She has kids yeah. straight away. And we had people oh. li- typing in and, and giving advice and all. But it's, mm. I think, that, what was the main consensus like to say? Right off the bat, and then you weed out the bad ones. Yeah, then, you've said it; it's out there, and then you'll know if someone's. Yeah, if that's if that's something that somebody doesn't want has to, a problem with has a problem with, which they're completely entitled to as well. Like they don't want to date somebody who has a kid or whatever. Like mm. I think that's different can, though yeah. because kids are very like kids are a massive deal. It's a whole like, lot that's some, like you know, if yeah. they're your kids, you're going to be so protective yeah. of it. You have to look out for them. So if you are dating someone, they need to know that like this is a package deal. Like they mm-hmm. come with me. Yeah, but. Being divorced, 
True. It's not the same. It's not the same considerations no, because yeah. it's not going to have an impact. Yeah. Unless you share kids or anything like that, there's no impact there. Mm, so at what point? But also some people might find that they don't want to date someone who's been married before because they want to do it one time with one person. And yeah. So it's just a really, I don't know. Yeah, if anyone has I, any advice, let I me know. I feel like yeah. I'd bring up the show, but then you can't bring up the show without bringing up the divorce either. Do you know what's hard? It's like that, don't talk about your exes on like a first date. Yeah. I don't want to go on a date and tell someone I'm married or I was married. Do you know, yeah. I can't tell them about the show without saying, well, I actually did get married and this is yeah. why I got married and this is why it didn't work out. Yeah. I don't want to have that. That's a, that's a terrible first date. Yeah. Like I want to <laughs> have fun. I'm like, yeah. like do you, do you know what I mean? Do you, do you start talking about shows and be like, should I ever watch Love is Blind? And it's like, like, no. Yeah. And the other thing is, some people might be really adverse to dating someone who's done reality TV. True, yeah. Yeah. I used to think that about would people be adverse to dating influencers. And did you that. ever meet anyone who was like not for no. me? I mean, you're no. a babe, so who's going to no, 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 say no, like no, no, really no, bad no, like no. A test group? <laughs> but also I feel like people just wouldn't have approached, if they did have a problem with it, they wouldn't approach. Yeah. So when you met someone, how did you know it was for genuine reasons and not because of who you were? I met Dano <laughs> when I had 30k at the time, I remember. I think because he was a footballer, I was like, he also has a bit of a yeah. profile. So I'm like, I just trusted that. But yeah. I but I did have that thought then when me and Dana broke up because I was like single forever time. I was like, if I meet someone new, like how will I know that now that I have more followers if it is genuine? Are or not? they only with your yeah. followers? Like, yeah. It know. is definitely a thought that crossed your it's mind. It's a weird world that you even have to think that nowadays, yeah. isn't it? Like But then I feel like people wouldn't go as far as to being with you in a relationship if they if that's what they wanted. Well maybe like do you think oh, there's some freaks out there, girl? Really? Freaks. Yeah. Anyway, I'm getting married with Dana. Anyway. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, you are. Well, Definitely. hopefully it works out better no, for you than it did for me. <laughs> I think we will. Really happy for you. You will find your new retirement. <laughs> really you great. Will. That's you working will. out for you, Charlene. Wait to rub it in. <laughs> no, I always say we're getting married. No, you do. But you we're do. not like, yeah. not good. You are. <laughs> well, Sabrina, we thank can't you thank so you much. enough for coming in and spilling. Yeah. Not even spilling the gospel, just spilling the sand on you and your life and everything. I mean, so on. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It's really amazing. Thank you so much for listening. You can go back to listen to our bonus episode from Monday, Home or Drink Extra Juice. Make sure to listen to that. What? I can't <laughs> speak anymore. <laughs> fresh, 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 fresh. So make sure to listen back to that now before a new bonus episode next Monday. And don't forget, you can watch us on YouTube now as well with full video being released every Thursday at 12 p.m. Make sure to like, rate, and subscribe to the podcast. And we love you. We love you. Bye. Bye. Subscribe to this podcast for free on the Go Loud app. This is an advertisement from BetterHelp Therapy Online. It's Charlene and Ellie here from the Home I Drink podcast and sometimes we tend to compare our lives to others. I know social media definitely does that for me. You also hear the phrase, comparison is the thief of joy and it is so true. Therapy can help you focus on what you want instead of what others have so you can start living your best life. I don't know how many times I've said therapy on this podcast. Yeah. I literally, <laughs> every dilemma comes in. There's nothing that you can't go to therapy for. Like It just yeah. can help every every problem you have there's you know. no specific one thing that you have to go for yeah and I think people think you only have to go for like these huge dramatic things in your life mm. but it can be just comparing yourself online True. if you're thinking of starting therapy give better help a try it's entirely online designed to be convenient flexible and suited to your schedule just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a registered therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge with over a thousand therapists in the UK already better help can provide access to mental health professionals with a wide variety of expertise in mental health our listeners can get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash HMD. That's betterhelp.com slash HMD.